So I'm gonna start now. Hello, everybody. So yeah, uh, recap on some simple stuff about Dragon All. Very easy to use. Well, no, not easy to use. Easy to game plan with character. With very strong pokes. And just the general very strong poking game plan. Obviously, down two, you cannot sidestep. This is might as well be a homing low. Uh, what's up, Damail? Damail, uh, good games. <laughs> if I played your Kuma, good games. Uh, my Miguel's trash, trust me. Uh, so don't feel bad if you feel like your character is trash. I feel the same way about my character, regardless of if I win or lose. <laughs> Miguel isn't my character, by the way. Uh, what's up, Blade City? So yeah, recap. Uh, everybody should know this by now, but in case you don't, down two is arguably the best low poke in the game. Down two tracks both sides. You can't step this shit. Uh, there are some odd instances where certain characters, if they're already off access, which is say a little bit towards Dragonov's left or a little bit towards his right, like a Steve maybe. Thanks for the follow, Blade City. There's some characters where uh, they they could do like weird shit, like a Steve sidestep into sway, and maybe they'll get around this. But in general, you could pretty much consider this almost like a damn homing low, basically, right? And uh, it does good amount of damage, 17 damage, and it's only zero on hit, which is a blessing and a curse. Double-edged sword. A lot of people freeze up against this low poke when they get hit. You got to remember, on normal hit, it's only zero. So basically, it's a mix-up on both sides. Dragonov does not have the advantage here, okay? You could sidestep his while standing four, and then you could, like, interrupt anything slower with your while standing four. You could interrupt any of his slower options. And you both could only sidestep towards one direction because Dragonov recovers crouching, and he forces you to recover crouching when he hits you with it, right? So you just have to really know this stuff and know, oh, what tracks, what are my tracking moves? What am I on P1 side or am I on P2 side? And then, uh, what are Dragonov's tracking moves in this situation, and go based on that info. Of course, on counter hit, they buffed it. It's, like, plus fucking 10,000, so be careful. Uh, if you get hit by it, if you're against Dragonov. If you're the Dragonov player, and, uh, you confirm that counter hit, press your advantage. It's like, what is it? Plus 13, says the second bot. Press your advantage. The other thing is, while running two, if you're gonna main this character, or even if you're gonna play him, you need to be able to threaten with while running two at all ranges. From here, from here, from here, from here. You need to be able to threaten with while running two at all ranges. That's your that's your end game with this character. That and the step kick stuff and maybe sometimes it's while standing forward. Those are the hard execution things with this character. And those are really what make him complete. The combination of while running two with down two make it complete. Because anytime he runs up to you, people are like, oh man, they might hesitate to press a button because this shit could counter hit them and then they take a shitload of damage. And then to mix it up, you could dash up down two. That opens up dash up into anything. Specifically dash up down two. That's the big one. That's the big one to, to, to mix up a while running two. If he also has the homing move, forward forward three, which you could press forward forward, hold the second forward, press three a little later to add even more of a dash to mask your while running two. Which is also, this is plus something on block. I forget, whatever it was. Uh, whatever it was last time. It's like plus, they, they nerfed the frame edge, didn't they? It's only plus three now. I think they used to be plus four or five. And it pushes back a lot. So it only matters at the wall. So yeah. That's just a super basic game plan. You, you use you use while running two, you use down two to augment his other pokes. His down forward one poke, his back four three series, back four two one, death march into ear grab, death march into tackle, all that shit. Sorry. Why is he not tackle, damn it? There it is. Death march death march by itself. All that shit. And then back 4-3, of course, is a natural combo for a decent amount of damage. Back 1-2 is another solid move with some back movement uh, going on. But it's not really a crush, per se. But if you space it like back here, you'll be surprised at how much you avoid. Because he moves a little bit back when he does it. Uh, and shit like that. A really good fast homie move back 3. You know, he has this really obviously good stuff. Down forward 2 is a great 15 frame launcher. And this shit has some really weird tracking going on where there are times where you won't be able to sidestep it at all and there are times where you can sidestep it towards one direction. It's really weird. I don't know the rules. <laughs> I, I, I was unable to find a consistent rule other than if he makes you block a down forward one, you probably will not be able to sidestep the second down forward one. But he makes you block a jab, it's a down forward one. You could go left. But if he does down forward one to the down forward one, which is negative two on block. 
You can't go all of a sudden. Which tells me it has something to do with, like, the frame window and the timing of your sidestep. That's my only guess. Really finicky shit. So he had his 13 frame poke for some reason tracks really well. I don't know. And, uh, yeah. A lot of good shit. So, now that we got that away, it's over 9,000? Sure. Hold on a second. Let me change something. The chat is tiny. How do I make the chat larger? Let me close that. There we go. That's much better. I, like, almost doubled my chat size. <clears throat> As always, please let me know if uh, the music is overpowering me. I can't tell from my end. These fucking meters lie to me all the time. What about sidestep right? Well, hell, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. But no for this. See? I learned this on stream because somebody came into my chat and asked me about it, like, a month ago. For whatever reason, dragging up doing down forward one into another down forward one on block, you can't step it. Maybe Lily can. But off of a jab, you can sidestep it in both directions. The only thing is his down forward one is negative two instead of negative one, which means you'll exchange with 15 frame launchers, and they will convert. Convert the same way. Um, I think No Pants is editing together a video uh, where Aris did that combo with the reset. Just for those of you that don't know, Dragon Elves while standing four has a reset property. Um, how can I show this off? Let me turn off any sort of wake up. A reset in Tekken is not like a reset in Street Fighter or 2D games. Let me take a swig of water here. For those of you that don't know what a reset is at all, if you're new to fighting games, what we mean by reset is off of a situation like a juggle or hitting an opponent out of the air if it's a 2D fighter, you'll s typically you'll sacrifice some sort of damage to go for a setup. Like, it gives you really strong setup options, right? So like a 2D fighter, for example, Street Fighter V, there's a lot of anti-air jabs. So when you jab the opponent out of the air in Street Fighter V or any 2D game, they're considered in a non-juggleable state. Well, they'll, they'll float in the air, they will cover air, and they're invincible throughout that whole duration. And then they'll land on the floor, which is, gives you basically Oki, the same Oki as if you knock them down. That's how it works in Street Fighter. So you get the advantage, basically, because your attack is going to come out first. In Tekken, a reset is nothing like that. A reset is you're, you, uh, you do a juggle, you knock your opponent in the air or something, right? And then you let them fall. And there are moves with uh, hitboxes that float that if they hit if they hit the ground and they don't tech, which is um, teching is... Ugh, let me make the AI do it. I don't know why I can't tech. Teching is this quick uh, side quick roll left and right. If you mash punches, you go toward the background. If you mash kicks, you go towards the foreground. That's teching. A reset would be like this. Let me see if I can time this, right? If, if he were to stay down... Oh. See? You see how that did not combo? That's a reset. You see how that comboed? That's not a reset. That's just me juggling. Why does this matter? Well, let me tell you something. In Tekken, if you reset someone, if they don't take off the ground, and then you reset them, you don't get back like... Uh, it was bound in other games, but you don't get back the corkscrew property, but... You reset the hit scaling, uh, the, the damage goes up to 60 or 70%, whatever. It resets back to that, and the amount of hits you did post-launch reset also. What do I mean by that? Well, the more hits you do in a juggle, the further each hit sends them away, which is one of the ways they limit, like, really fucked up juggles in Tekken. That also resets. So if you get if you manage to follow my my weird explanation there, I never had to explain a second reset to anybody. So that was my first try. Um, what that means is if you if no pants ends up uploading that video, you might have noticed Aris did like a juggle. I think he did a low parry. He ended the juggle with forward three, and then he canceled the forward three and did a while standing four, which reset. So like I don't know. I never done Dragon Ball's reset, so I'm just making a bootleg ass juggle to show you an example. Uh, maybe 
maybe not. That's not a good example. Uh, I'll just do the usual. Hmm. I'm gonna get it once. I don't know if you get it off of this, but. There it is. That was a reset. And then I could have did another full juggle. I'll try. This is not as hard as it seems if you're used to dragging all those juggles, but I never practice it. This is one of those things you gotta practice. Wow. <laughs> the strings are coming out now. Oops, I hit one. Wow, why is back 4-3 not coming out? It's been like a week, guys, so... So even my basic execution is going to be trash right now. It's forward 3, cancel, up, down, forward, while standing 4, right? Alright. <sighs> Damn it! That was. <laughs> I held the down forward too long there. I give up. I got the reset to happen once. I just didn't do the juggle. What's up, man? Feel games. Ah. So. I got the reset once. I just didn't follow up with the juggle. But what would have happened is after I did the lost 94 reset, I would have been able to do one forward three, one forward three, one like three times again. And it would have probably added like a total of 10 more damage to the juggle. So the thing about resets is they're kind of gimmicky in the sense that the how you get out of a reset is teching off the floor. It makes it whiff. And Dragunov specifically doesn't have any sort of crazy option to punish them for doing that. The most infamous example of punishing... What the hell is wrong with my... Uh, the most infamous example of using a reset effectively mid-stage was Tekken 6 Brian. Tekken 6 Brian had a down back 2 reset. And if he teched, he would do the taunt into Jet Upper. So he punished you for teching, basically. But I just figured I would explain that so... Now you know what I mean, if uh, or what anybody means when they say reset in Tekken. That's what they mean. Pretty much every character can do that in the game. It's just, is it good? Is it useful? Probably not. It's kind of gimmicky. It's one of those things you catch your opponent sleeping, you might get away with it. Alright. So now we got that out of the way. <clears throat> Let's talk about... Pigeon Roll. They gave him, in this game, the ability to do this out of a sidestep. He did not have the ability to do this before. He had this in Tekken Tag 2, though. Off of uh, certain moves, he could cancel them. So, the thing to know about this... Uh, if Is there any use for it? I don't know. You can do some badass dodges with it, I guess. And you might end up behind your opponent, depending on what you avoid. He recovers crouching. So, the instant you do something... If you do an attack right after you, uh, you recover from it, it's going to be a while standing move, right? So that's one, one thing worth noting. The other ways to do this move are... Um, oh, he doesn't have that anymore. Uh, anytime you do this tackle, any, any series that goes into this tackle, he could cancel into that row by inputting it uh, 1 plus 2 again. So, for example, just doing the tackle... In the neutral is down back one plus two. If he double tap it or triple tap, there it is. Triple tap. Sorry, there it is. Triple tap. You'll go towards the four, uh, the background, and then if you uh, double tap kicks, he goes towards the foreground. Double tap both kicks to go toward the foreground. Double tap both punches to go towards the background. Same thing with this. Ugh. See? Same thing. 
So, is there an ease for that? I don't think there is, but you should know that that's there. <laughs> just, just to know it, right? Another weird, unique thing that Dragunov has. Let's go to reset settings. And then I'm going to... Player status, face down. Okay, feet toward. Back. So there's a way to do a hit throw off of this. Does he need counter hit? He might need counter hit. Huh. Somebody Somebody found this out in the chat recently and said how to do it, and I don't know how to do it. He has a hit throw out of this, but it's not that useful, but it is there. Maybe he needs to be closer to me. Let's see. Uh, anyone know how to do it? You need clean hit and get up holding down. What's up, dude? Alright. Does it need counter hit? There it is. Yeah, you just have to keep holding down. The reason why people don't do this, though, is because if you... You get that. You get a juggle. What I don't know is if... Uh, oh, no, you don't need a counter hit. So there's no reason to do it other than just to look cool, I guess. Even if it gives good oki. It's like, you're gonna do that, and then, you, you know, why? You know, you, you got a full juggle. 40 damage versus oh, random combo, 50 damage, 10 more damage, just like that. Uh, I find it really useful because I've been using it online at last at last minute rounds. But you need a clean hit, which means you get the juggle. Uh, try ending with I think three, two, one. Three, two, one. What's three, two, one? You mean three, one, two? No, you don't need that for walk carry. You need you use three one two if you don't know how to do the uh, forward three stuff, or if your distance from the wall makes it so you could connect all of this instead of like that. You get what I'm saying? Because all of this into a wall splat will probably lead to more damage than that, or even that maybe. Twenty seven, eleven. Yeah, basically. Uh, uh, connecting all of 3-1-2 into a wall splat would be more damage than forward 3-4-1. Dragonaut is kind of one of those free-flowing uh, free characters with his wall juggles. Wall carry. With any juggles, really. You could just kind of, like, fit shit in when you, uh, when you get the hang of it. You know, you don't always have to do the same juggle every time. <clears throat> so yeah, that's some weird move that you won't see on his move list. Hold down when he's in the face down feet toward position on normal hit. He'll get that hit throw. Cane stab. This is a really specific one. This gives him a sort of, but not really, back turn mix up. What do I mean by that? I'll show you. I'll try to show you right now. So this low, it's a knockdown low. Also, if I'm not mistaken... Does this give him a reset? Tag too that used to give them a reset if they stayed down. Whatever. Or maybe it's because they back rolled. There's no back rolling anymore. 
Um, so it's, it knocks down on normal hit. The thing I don't know is if he gets any guaranteed follow-ups. I don't think he does. Like, if they're right up against his face, maybe. But what I never know about this move is what is it on block? It's only negative 11. That's good. For a knockdown low, that's good. A knockdown low that does 20 damage. That's really good. So then, uh, what, well, what, what did I mean by mix-up before? Well, if they duck, the idea is that you hit him with the back turn hawk kick. But as you can see, that really uh, highlights the problem with back turn hawk kick. These are normal hit launchers, right? Right? See? Oh, no, not that one. The four. Four version is a normal hit launcher, right? 21 damage, too. Really good damage. Uh, back turn hot kick is only negative 12 instead of negative 13. And it is a mid. The problem with it, though, is if people get uh, start to duck your shit. Now, he might be too close to me here for this, but... Yeah, he's too close. The hitbox on it is so shitty that if they're, like... Not in front of your face. It's just gonna whiff. It's fucking whiff city. Now this is too far to really show you guys. Uh, finding the positioning to make it whiff. See, he just gets right in your face. Um, how about this? That looks close, staring at that ass. That! His face has to be like right in my fucking crack for that shit to hit. Look at that shit. Uh, and tag two, it had a purpose since you could tag out with it. The low? Oh, you mean the hit throw? The uh, hit throw? Okay, I didn't know that. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I didn't know that. But once again, you don't have to use that to tag out if your low juggles. If you wanted to tag out, you would do the regular low and end your juggle with this, and then you would tag off of that in tag two. So I still don't see the use other than other than looking cool. I mean, the wall could fuck that up, I suppose, right? So, yeah, you know. That's the big thing. They have to be pressed up against your rear to really mix up with the back turn hawking. And I know this because I used to see Aris go for this uh, res uh Well, not reset, but he would do this, uh, this juggle in tag two all the time where he would end with forward three. It's a forward three, right? After, like, a full juggle, he the first forward three would connect. And the second forward three would whiff. The idea is if you tech, the second mo the, the second forward three moves Dragon off forward, and he ends up back to back with you. And then he could either do the mix up or recover in time, depending on what you do when you get up to uh, punish you with the back turn hot kick. And it was such it was like a cool a cool like setup, right? He would often go for the low, but then whenever he would try to mix up with the hot kick. The back turn hot kick, let's just say his results were uh, inconsistent. And he would always go, what the fuck, like, get surprised. I'm like, it happens to you more often than it doesn't. Like, by now we should know. This, you know, I went in here with having never tested this shit in my life knowing that was going to happen. The hitbox is shit on the back turn hawk. At least Dragonov's. I know Law has a pretty good one. But Dragonov's back turn hot kick, this is not good enough for it. <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> that's that move. But it is good that, you know, it's only negative 11, and I did not know that. So it, it that doesn't mean it's a bad move by any means. If you end up back turn, remember that you have access to this with down three. Uh, I don't know about testing the tracking for it, because I have no way to really do it other than just neutral, you know, 
timing a sidestep. Next, we got Living Dead. Living Dead. You have to be face down on the floor to do this. One plus two, you get up, right? You wake up um, crouching. So you go right to while standing if you press something, right? If you double tap, is it double tap? Yeah, double tap, you go right into the tackle. Okay, you cannot, that tackle, you cannot cancel into the uh, roll like you could with the standing tackle. So you're committing to this. Yes, you can break that tackle in case you want to, by the way. I go through, I'll go through the specifics of those tackles when I go through the throws. Um, so the thing about this is this uh, move has a tendency, when you're face down feet towards, it has a tendency to really fuck with your opponent's Oki really badly. There are times where other characters have situations where, where like, there's certain moves that they usually cannot get escape if they try to, like, hold back or something. Living Dead, historically, I don't know about this game, historically, Living Dead in some of those situations was able to escape that move because he creates space faster with it than just holding back does. The thing about that is uh, the usefulness probably isn't as good in the, uh, you know, Useful. It's probably not as useful in this game because now you got that new get-up animation where you hold back that creates a shitload of space. So it's like, you know, Living Dead is just kind of gimmicky now. I, every once in a while, though, I will still use it like this to catch people sleeping. It's nice to have still. It is a unique way of getting up, but it's like a, your mods may vary situation. Like if you're a Dragon on main and you know how to record setups on yourself, Oki setups, test Living Dead against those setups. Like against the lows. Well... Test Living Dead going away <laughs> against lows. And mids, if mids are designed to hit you but don't hit grounded, test if Living Dead goes under the mid, and then you could tackle people with it. Like right here, if he were to go for some sort of mid, maybe Living Dead will go under it, and then I'll get a guaranteed tackle attempt. Or maybe I'll just get up and be right in his face after he whiffs. That's possible too. Dragonoff is vulnerable during Living Dead and right after. So if people read that you're going to do it in, let's say, this situation, they could chase you down and do a full string on your back. So Living Dead is very unsafe for people who are aware of the situation and know how to punish it. So be careful with it. That's it for Living Dead. Uh, Death embraces the tackle during Living Dead. Oh, and then six feet under his stomp. Look at the you know, these move names are so sick. I don't know about pigeon roll, but integral takedown, <laughs> integral blitz. I went through his last times. Ross tackle, glacial hit. Cause Russia is cold, guys. In case you didn't know that. Chernobog sweet. I still love Death March into ear grab. And Sleigh Ride. Where's Sleigh Ride? Yeah, Sleigh Ride. <laughs> Pinpoint Fracture, dude. Alright, let me not get into this again. Uh, <laughs> Russian Assault while running to... I gotta start calling while running to Russian, Russian Assault. I'm trying to get to the habit of, like, in case I ever get a commentary gig. I don't think I will, but just in case I ever do. Get to the habit of calling moves by their names. And the best place to start with that is Dragonov, right? Because his move list is, is in English, first of all. And his move names are so sick that it makes it easier to remember them. So anyway, Six Feet Under is actually one of the best. There's a lot of characters that have stomps in the game, unique stomps. And Six Feet Under is probably the best, if not one of the best, right? So the thing about these stomp moves are they only happen when the opponent is in a grounded state. Uh, there is a window where, for example, if you were to do down plus three plus four in a situation where I'm going to... Put my opponent in a situation where they can tech, but I'm going to guess that they won't tech. They're going to stay down the side row, so I'm going to dash up and input the stomp. If they happen to tech, the stomp might still come out and it'll whiff, or you'll get typically a down three. There used to be a OS regarding this. If you um, held the four and press down plus three for the stomp, there used to be an OS that would make down three happen with a, with a really good timing on people that tech in certain situations. I don't, that was Tekken 6, so I don't I don't even remember what it was off of. This is actually, like, I learned that from Aris's, uh 
Dragunov guide in Tekken 6 on uh, Rip's channel. <laughs> he talked about some specific situation where there was an OS. I think it was off of his tooth throw with his back to the wall. But in general, what makes this stomp so good is people are able, outside of situations where it's guaranteed, like for example, back plus one plus two, like this. It's guaranteed off of that. Everybody knows that shit, right? But if you go for a situation like I talked about earlier, where you go, oh, if they stay down, I'm gonna guess stomp, and then if they get up, the, if they get up, I'll whiff it. They could also get up in time to block in those situations. If that were to happen, I believe it's only negative 11. Most stomps are actually launch punishable. Most, not all. Most are launch punishable or like negative 13 or 14, where it's in that gray area where some characters can launch you, but a lot of characters can actually make you really hurt if they can't launch you with like 13 or 14 frames while standing, right? Uh, I, I believe this is negative 11. Let me see if I can set up a situation where, um, I gotta record this on myself. That looked good. See how it's in the process of getting up? Negative 11, see? But... He could still hit me if I get up. It's only zero on hit. Not plus, so keep that in mind. Now if I were to tech. See? That's the OS. I did it by complete accident. You see how he did down three instead of the stomp? And down three came out slow enough that it came... I would have to block low, basically. If I tech. See? There are setups where you could get that to work off of like a full juggle or some shit, right? Uh, they're probably not as useful as they used to be because everybody goes for the same setups off of his juggle, same Oki, which is dash up down two versus while running two, which is way better than doing that. But you know, that is like a side effect of the stomp. Most other characters, when they don't get their stomp off because of a tech like this, they'll get some other bootleg move that's gonna completely whiff or it's gonna come out too fast like a generic down four, down back four for dragging off. It's gonna come out too fast with because of the tech and then Dragon will either be able to punish you or the person getting up will either be able to punish you for it for whiffing it or they'll get the advantage because you're still recovering but that is launch punishable also if you don't come into the second hit so that's the downside <laughs> it's not all uh, rainbows there uh, sometimes it's worth doing the grab even when you're going away from the opponent to create more space mm. that's true the waking dead grab face down one plus two you create more space let me just show that real quick so that's without the grab with the grab he makes that little <laughs> sound effect and he creates more space as you can see here without with but he does recover slower So yeah, that's that. Next, we got 10 hit combo. Both of these start with one, uh, the same uh, string. 1, 3, 1, 2. Uh, I talked about 1, 3, 1 before. 1, 3, 1 used to be plus 1 on block and tag 1. Tag 2, sorry. They made a negative 3 now, I think. Yeah, negative three now, which is weird because that makes it a lot less useful. Before, well, I mean, you know, it's not useless, but it used to, people used to mix it up with that. One, three, two. For when you duck the one, three, one. But anyway, here's how this works. One, three, one, two, four, one plus two. That's the shoulder ender, right? The shoulder ender, of course, launch punishable. And then you could duck the third hit. If you don't duck the third hit, you got to block the whole thing. But he could stop at the four there. And he's only negative 14, and if you're afraid of swinging because of the shoulder, you know, that's the idea for there. Uh, if you don't duck the third hit, if he connects to your back, then the rest is guaranteed. So you have to duck the third hit, otherwise it's all guaranteed.
I'm just gonna hold down back after he hits me. See? Of course, you gotta stand block too, otherwise the mid is gonna catch you. So you gotta crouch and then stand block. If I just try to hold back, see? It all hits me. I'll try to hold forward this time because that turns you around faster to guard. Nope. It all hits you. So keep that in mind. That if you're going against drag and for some reason this is hitting you, that was why. Of course, 1 3 2 on the back it is guaranteed. And that's probably his ideal punisher for Ling Zhaoyu's uh, California roll into the double kick. What's that? 41 damage versus 35 damage. Though that knockdown does might give you some good Oki if you get him in the back. I don't think it's anything guaranteed. Oh, he recovers too slow. He gets a reset. That was a reset. An example of what I was talking about. Let's see. Aw. <laughs> reset into another reset. He can indefinitely reset down 4-1, can he? Infinite. Aris, this is an infinite. Why doesn't the thing show combo? How do I escape this? This is what I'm talking about. Reset. See? It, the, the scaling of the, you know, the, the scaling that knocks the opponent away resets constantly. What was it? Uh, I want to learn law, DSS, cancel, back forward, legend kick. That just takes practice. It's not easy to do. But practice. It's not like... That's not like taunt jet upper hard. Or like even like, you know, it's about as hard as maybe an electric. But it's really more about like a pattern, I guess. Maybe there's a certain cadence you want to press it. Because I have done it before. I learned it in Tekken 6. Uh, when I switch to wall stages, I'll pick law real quick. And I'll try it. The way I used to do it is 4-3 and I slow, after pressing the 4 and pressing the, while pressing the 3, I would slowly press back forward. And then I would press forward 3 right after. With like a certain timing. You don't have to press it fast. So yeah. <coughs> What's up, Ted, man? Um, that's that 10 hit. His actual 10 hit is fucking whatever. Just duck, same thing. Duck the third hit. There is a high, though. The fifth hit is another high. There's a couple of highs in there. But, uh... Basically, you want to get into the habit of ducking the third hit of 1-3-1 one, one anyway, really. Not every time, though, because 1-3-2 could catch you. I get it. Uh, if he does go for this whole thing, by the time he does the fifth hit and it's a high, it's obvious, right? But wait for the low. Right after the elbow, he gets the low on the seventh or sixth, whatever hit that is. That's the sixth hit. The low is on the sixth hit. Low will parry the low. All right, now we go through his throws. One plus three, generic, one plus three. Wow, that used to work, I think. That used to be like re really good after that throw. Down three, but now that new back get up animation is like, no, fuck you. Ooh. Does it reach? Look at that, all right, let's record it on me. Best thing about that is you can mash it out. I love it. Okay, so holding back makes it whiff, unfortunately. And you don't want that a whiff. See? Punish. He's in recovery. Uh... If down three doesn't reach... That's probably not going to reach either, but whatever. I've been surprised before. Yep, nope. That's a big whiff, too. Down two, if you can make down two whiff, recovers very slow. Remember that. It's very hard to make a whiff in this game, but if you make it whiff, you launch that ass. And that's always something that I felt in older games. Because in older games, they didn't quite have this much range. 
It definitely, they definitely buffed the range. And I would get whiff punished all day long for using abusing down two. That's another thing that makes it so fucking cheap. It was already an amazing ass low poke before. But they buffed the range. Uh, if down three doesn't reach, I don't think any other low is going to reach unless he dashes up. So then it becomes... Can he dash up in time? I try to dash up a little bit there. Slight shuffle step forward, huh? That was probably too much. I could probably wake up kick him now. Yeah, no. So the Zoki during that is no good. Uh, maybe a step forward to a down three. It's too, too hard for a generic throw. Fuck that. Uh, the two throw is important. His two throw is important because it switches sides on both success and failure. It's cool looking. Um, and see if they break it. They roll. So the thing you got to notice is both on success and failure, all this space is created. If I'm not mistaken, uh, if... He successfully throws you with his back to the wall. He actually gets really good Oki, right? Because let's just look right now. Let's just record him doing a wake-up kick, right? Made us faster, I believe. Let's just press a button and see when Mike comes out. See? You see how my standing four came out way before that wake-up mid, right? That wake-up mid is 15 frames. Look at that. I fucking... My, my fucking kick is already active before he even starts up his animation. So if his back is to the wall, he's actually right on top of his opponent. Now, I don't know if anything is guaranteed. I'll have to go through this again when I switch to a wall stage. I don't know, maybe now's the time to go to the wall stage, right? See? Back 4-3, that's a wall splat. I don't even know what else. Um, oh, here's a big one. Counter hit on that. Not that you need a counter hit, but the fact that such an amazing mid option is going to beat out wake up kicks? Dude, that's cheap. That count, the sweet counter hit him. This 26 frame sweet, 27, whatever it is. That counter hit him out of 50 frames. So yeah, you have really good advantage. Nothing guaranteed, but you have advantage after a successful uh, throw with your back to the wall. Um, after a break, I'd have to record something on myself. Um, let's just mash four. Let's mash back four. I'm trying to think about how to do this, but so 
So I was mashing back four there, right? I want to see if that beats out anything. Uh... Nope, okay. So yeah, no, no advantage on break. Oh, let's see. Oh, even. Even frames. Even frames on break for this specific throw. Not all throws are created equal, by the way. You can test frame advantage off of every specific throw on break if you want. But in general, it's like very situational. More often than not, um, generic throws give you better recovery on break than command grabs. As a matter of fact, Dragonov is one of those cases. I'll get there. So that's zero. So based on this recording I did at least, I matched four like crazy. It appears to be negative two if you break his one throw. Uh, would you want to do a fight to three against me and prove the good piss? Uh, not right now. Uh, you could stomp after that move. Not guaranteed. You could try. Not guaranteed. Uh, oh, you mean back one plus two? Yeah, you guaranteed stomp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another hard execution grind. I'm too lazy. It ain't that. It ain't that bad. Trust me. Look, I'll show you right now. I'm actually working on some final papers. I have to finish one of them today and at least work... Almost finish the other one today. So, I just feel like it's been such a long time since I screened. I took some small breaks to play some Miguel online. But, in general, like... Because I needed at least a small break, but... Um... I haven't done shit since my last Hikusa stream as far as streaming goes, so I wanted to get at least one stream in here. So real quick aside here. Dynamic Escape was asking about the the low wall combo, right? The 4-3 DSS. So you got 4-3. If you, if you input 4-3 and then press back forward, he does that stupid little hop skip back, right? That little skip back. That's DSS. Right? See? In DSS, he has forward 3, which is that big-ass kick right there, the armor kick. And it does a shitload of damage, dirty damage. So the reason why that's such a good wall combo is the combination of two things. Number one, that does a shitload of damage. Number two, the 4-3... Sets up the DSS forward three to count as a low wall hit, which means it's gonna rescale back up to 60%. Thir uh, si uh, what's 60% of 30? I don't know, you do the fucking math. Uh, 16, 17 damage, whatever, right? So the idea is, I don't know, what's a fucking law, law combo? First try, dude. Come on. <laughs> I don't play this fucking character. You can mash it out. It's even easier than it used to be. I did it off of a wall carry. It's even easier to do if you wall splat him. It was 18 damage. Uh, you you see me play online. You know my execution is not good. So <laughs> just practice. You know, and you're not gonna get it fast, of course. It's just you gotta get into like that the habit of. Seconds weird like inputs. Uh, 
Oh, I didn't get it there. Oh my god, it feels easier than before. You have no excuse. Hey, your PS4, come on! I'll fucking hook up PS4 right now and do this shit. <laughs> Stop making excuses! Stop making excuses! Just do it. Put on the Nikes. Just do it. Swoosh. Come on, man. So here's the only trick that I can tell you that helped me get used to it. The 4-3 back forward. You could input that slowly. Back forward. You don't like... You don't have to go back forward. You don't have to do that. The, the back forward you could input... Look at that. You could input the back right after you input the 4. And then you could input the forward after you input the 3. And you'll get it. And then just mash out forward 3 afterwards. See? It's not a natural combo cube. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now I got that out of the way. It's much harder to do it like during juggles because you have to run up. 4-4-4 four, four, four is a move. So you gotta run up and then let the stick uh let go of the stick. Let it go to neutral and then input 4-3. So that might be awkward if you're not used to it. There's a couple of characters that do that kind of thing, like Jack, Law, and other characters I don't remember and I don't play as. So I know the uh, doing it in, in mid juggle to get the uh, to get the uh, to get the fucking that, which I think does tailspin, right? I think that's harder actually. I think I don't know. I never tried it. It's new to this game. I don't play law because I'm not a bitch. All right, let me switch back to Dragon Off. I play other bitch characters like Dragon Off. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say I play Dragon Off anymore. So he went through his regular throws so far. Uh, two throw obviously mid stage is no Oki because he kicks you away across the screen, which is really good if your back is to the. Uh, no, sorry. Um, never mind. I, I didn't say that. Never mind. <laughs> Forget what I was just trying to say. Um, oh, we're back at the wall. Cool. All right. Next on the throw list, we got four. Is it four, four, one plus two or side throws? We got side throws. Uh, they go through the command grabs after the back throws, right? Is that how this thing works? Once again, for those of you that don't know this, regular throws, the reason they're input separately like this is because forward plus regular throw adds range but makes them slower, three frames slower. Regular throws are 12 frames. Forward plus the, uh, the throw is 15 frames. But you cannot sidestep forward plus the throw you can sidestep the regular throw 12 frames outside of the weird like oh i'm plus too much you know too much frame advances that's a different story but in a regular ass neutral situation there's no tracking in regular throws unless you hold forward which makes them slower so yeah um so now we got the side throws tarantula stand Oh, this one's brutal. That's a bad camera angle for it, but that's a good one. Uh, that's that. You can't see what he's doing. Show it. He's like separating your leg from the other leg and doing like an ankle twist. It's pretty vicious. Positioning looks good. The question is, does he recover in time to get anything crazy? I tend to not really go too crazy on throw Oki from the side throws or back throws. At least the side throws, because how often are you going to get a fucking side throw, right? It's not going to happen. Really. Um, I will test it versus a wake-up kick, though. Yep. Wake-up kick lost to... Wake-up mid-kick lost to 15 frames. And 
an exchange with 17 frames. So you have a plus six frame advantage, basically. Basically. Which is uh, weird. It's weird to call it that way, I guess. But whatever. Um, not enough to really get anything guaranteed, I think. Like, I'm sure you'll be able to block low and shit. Guard all, he should be blocking that. Alright, let me, let me record this on myself. Always recording yourself to make sure. Uh, left side. Damn it. I'm here t talking about, like, I want to get a hitbox because my wrist keeps hurting. But then I have so much trouble inputting two bullets at the same time. I'm going to add that trouble to my movement, too. Down four is guaranteed off of that. So he has the uh, four forward one plus two, okay, which I'll go over later. But down four, oop, down four is guaranteed. Let's see. Yep, down four is guaranteed. Good. That's where I like to find out. <laughs> so fuck the okay, like as far as setups go. But if you get guaranteed damage, that's good shit. Um. All right, let's go for the right throw. Reverse fracture. God, that sounds awful. Ooh, just the arm bar. Uh, positioning was good again. Yeah, positioning was good again. Let's see what we got here. Right side. Ugh. Re-record. Dash up. Now this one might not be guaranteed. Yeah. Wake up kick. Okay, he got frame advantage at least. Ah. It's probably not terrible, but it probably will involve like down three or something. Well, I've seen enough. Next. From the rear, absolute silence. That's uh, not really a rear naked choke. Look, like he just straight up snaps your neck like Steven Seagal. He just. Uh, Leo's, I think, back one four string. I was using drags reversal instead of predicting the last hit, and it got all of them but the low. I mean, you could do that, or you could sidestep left and get more damage. Or, if you want to really swag against Leo's back 1-4, after you block back 1, do that. And that will win out. That, uh, his back screen blow will avoid the 4, the knee, and you don't have to, like, worry about any mix-up. Alright, so the back throw... Oh yeah, there's no Oki there. He like he's all the way across the screen. Fifty damage though. Let me check something real quick. Huh? That's what I side throw. Oh god damn it. Okay, good. That is his actual punish to Link's rule kick. And 
the reason why is these. So you see these two throws? These two are actual one break and two break grabs, command grabs. And these are 11 frame throws. Ling, Jayu's back turn, California row into the Rue kick is negative 11 on block. She stays back turn for 11 frames and can't do anything. So if you do one of these on her back, you're guaranteed to grab her in the back. And that's how, that's, that, that is the ideal way to punish those. It's just the input is awkward because it's forward. You have to hold forward. Plus one, plus three, or two, plus four. Cross. So if you're playing on pad, you got to be a button mapping bitch, basically. And even then, who button maps one plus four and two plus three? People button map one plus two and three plus four. They don't button map cross buttons like that, typically. Either way it goes. From the front, this is the one plus four grab. Looks like the Oki's good on that one. And uh, this is the two plus three grab. Uh, might be good on that too. Let's see. I'm gonna record it on myself. Oh yeah, another note about these throws. Um, they have the generic throw break animation and... Um, here's what I'm talking about. Negative two on the one break one. That's the generic throw break animation from the older games. Negative two on both of them. Wow, that's really good. I feel like they used to be worse. I might be wrong about that, but I think in tag two, they were a lot worse on break. Or in second six, maybe. If you can grab, if you command grab on a side or back, do you do you get generic throw? No, I was getting a side throw before. By the way, those of you that don't know, universally the way you break side throws, you don't look at the hands. You break based on the side that they grab you. If they grab your left side, you break with one. If they grab your right side, you break with two. Regardless of how the hands look. I'll show you that right now. So I'm gonna go towards my left and grab with two, ugh, and grab with two. If I stop jumping, see, that's a, I used a two grab on my left side. And I'm gonna mash one. See? Oh, I was, that, that was back turn. <laughs> Let me try two just in case. Yeah, see? Two didn't work. Virtual Fighter works like that too. <sighs> Doesn't he have a grab where he gets people who crouch? It seems slow. He sure do. Crouch grabs aren't useful in Tekken like they are in Virtual Fighter though, so. They're just there. Oh, Aris is playing Heavy Rain. Jason! Jason. All right, so now let's check the Oki of these grabs. That's crazy, right? They buff like they didn't really buff. Sorry, indirect buff in the sense that they nerf grabs outside uh, of like his grabs of command grabs, which buffs his grab, but only buffs it for newer players. So now newer players who who are like already struggling with throw breaks, like trying to learn it. It is easier than ever, but then they have to deal with the fact that he has both all, all, all the three breaks, right? <laughs> the proper breaks, and his are really fucking good, and they're faster than your average throw on top of all everything else. That's just cheap. Um, but anyway, let's test the uh, OP. That guaranteed? This is one plus four. Oh boy, every time I see that position, I'm like, guaranteed? 
Hold back. No. You gotta hold back. If you try to hold down back, it's gonna hit you. You gotta hold back. There you go. This looks blockable. Yeah, see? But if I hold back, it reaches. No. So the Oki, he's too far for it to be really good. It might still be good, though. Let's see what happens if he does this. His classic back to Oki is not what it used to be. Because it whiffs, not because of the new back cut up animation. But that used to be like his best mid option. Not anymore. So that actually really nerfs his Oki, his throw Oki. How come when you're sidewalking, it looks like it's so slow, like you're doing one side step at a time? Wait, what do you mean? You mean in, in, you mean me right now or in second? You mean what I'm doing here? Because I am. I'm canceling my side step. I always do that. Have it, I guess. You want to get uh, you want to do this in second a lot in general because uh, it's not as good as Soul Calibur 2's step canceling, step guarding. But it's a very important part of uh, uh, Tekken in general because a lot of moves that track tend to be slower than moves that don't track, right? Uh, outside of a couple of instances, depending on your frame situation. The ultimate example I could show you right now is if I record jab into down forward one, jab into down two. The down two tracks, the down forward one, outside of some weird instances, doesn't track. Right? Just to show you. Right? But the down forward one is way faster. So the, the best way I could highlight this is by doing this. You could also cancel into a stand guard. Oop. Bigger side step. Bigger side step. See? That's why this is important. And there's a lot of situations you could apply that sort of thing. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this is a habit. I, I always do that naturally at this point. I don't know why I wouldn't be able to tell you. Uh, what I say? If you do the down three while laying on the ground to grab them. Wait, grab them? Oh. Got the grab back. I mean, I guess. But like I said, there's no reason to do that. Because in the same situation where you'll get that grab, you'll get a juggle. So there's no reason. All right, so we were talking about uh, one plus four Oki, right? Huh, let's see what happens if I uh, wake up and kick, right? So it's gonna beat that out, right? Oh, I'll try to mash out down two and I got a cross jab. Okay, so it beats that out. How about if I dash? Mm. See, that's why I don't like to see. So the problem is, with this Oki is, you'll get good shit if they don't hold back and everybody holds back now because back row is gone. So you're going to whiff any lows. You have to dash up to connect with a low. So while the Oki is still generally in your favor, the problem with that is if you have to commit to dashing up into a button, you're going to run into a counter hit low, which is a juggle starter. Oh, that's not that. This. Because everyone goes low. Nobody goes mid. It's very rare to see people go mid if they wake up. Okay, see? And then you're going to eat a juggle. And you don't want... Th that's why I don't like committing to Oki unless it's a legitimate, like, 50-50. Or if I have a legitimate options to, like, cover, you know. Legitimate, two legitimate options to cover most of my bases, you know. I don't like risking a third option, which forces me to dash up and risk eating a counter hit low. I don't like that. So that's that. Let's test uh, the other grab. Grab him, damn it. Fuck. I have trouble executing this on an arcade stick, let alone. All right. 
This might be the same situation, but the angle gives me hope. Let's see. Okay, you could block it, but what happens if I hold back? See, that's okay. Let's try down three of them. This is two plus four, four plus two plus three. So yeah, alright, well, so I hold back. There's the big one. No, see? Because then what ends up happening is you're gonna get launched. What about if I commit to the down three, four? At least then, if they block it, it's only like negative 11 or whatever. Yeah, negative 11. No, thank you. I don't want to see it. You could punish that stuff hard, but you have to risk eating that counter hit low. This, on the other hand, gives you the guaranteed down four. This is four, four, one plus two. You guys know this grab. You've seen it. Guaranteed down four. The Oki for this throw used to be uh, you would mix up uh, his grounded hitting lows, like a stomp, typically a stomp, with back two. And then if they stood straight up, he'd basically give them the colonoscopy with his back two like that and guaranteed shoulder in the back when that happened. And if they back rolled, this would float them and he would get like while standing four into a juggle. But now, because of the new back it up animation, this whiffs. One other thing I've been seeing people do after that throw, though, is this. And I don't know why. Let's see. That's probably why right there, but if I hold back. Mm, at least that covers you. Yeah, see? I'll get counter hit if I try to swing. That's got to be why they're doing it. If I hold back, I make the first hit with, but I can't swing. I have to stay in play. I have to respect that second hit. Because if that second hit counter hits you, the third hit combos and you get to juggle. The down back 2-1-2. Two, two. This shit. The second hit counter hits you, the third hit is going to combo, and then he gets a wall standing 4 pickup. Or a down 2 pickup into a juggle. So that's what makes that better than the other instance. Now, let me try that versus... The thing is, you mix that up with like, a, they can't escape the low. That's why it's good in this situation. In the other instance, they, they can escape the low by holding back. So I have no reason to get up into ducking or, you know. Well, let's try this though, just in case. So if I whiff that, Right? It's going to beat out my, my wake-up moves, right? No, he's too far. Shit. That's bad. Oh, man. He recovers too fast. And then they both whiff. No good. What about the other throw? So this, this leaves him closer. See? He beats out wake up love. He exchanges with wake up mid. Mm. And if I hold back, I have to respect the second hit. Uh -huh. So it's not bad. It's not super bad off of this throw either. See, I'm trying to jab, and I got counter hit. So it's not a bad option off of the uh, 2 plus 3 grab. Forwards plus super three. You can get the back 2. No, you can't. If you hold back, it's going to whiff. Uh, back 2 used to be the setup. It's a wall standing 1 plus 2. Yeah, that's why I showed off. But it does not work. No, no. Look, check it out. I'll show you. Right? See, that right there was the old setup. If they, if they uh, try to stand straight up to block. 
And that's still the case now. You had to like confirm what happened after the back two. They stand straight up. That's guaranteed, right? Um, including on characters like Ying Zhao Yu or whoever had back two encounters because it's their shoulder. But the thing is, you have the new back get up animation. If they hold back, it whiffs. That ruins that Oki. Because before, if they hold back to roll, the back two would float them. And you would still get the shoulder, but it, ideally, you'd want it to get to a situation where you would hit confirm. You would confirm how it hits, and then do the appropriate follow-up after that. Yeah, they were being done with their wake-up. I think the same thing happens if they press a kick. Let's see. They get counter hit with a kick, or, you know. Oh, no. They're, he's facing you. What about four? Wake up mid. Oh. So he's facing it. See? So down back 2-1 has you covered. You could confirm if it hits the rear and do the third hit easily. Uh, you could confirm if they get up wake up kick and you counter hit them facing you and just do the first two hits and stop there. And then if they hold back, the first hit of down back 2 is going to whiff and the second hit you know is going to keep you covered if as long as you don't delay it. And then you could still mess with them and delay it. And then you have... The delay after the second hit to fuck with them even further. That's why people use that. But you'd be sacrificing the guaranteed down four. Down four is guaranteed. Now, what's annoying about that is down four four is a string. So if you mash down four, you're gonna get down four four, where you you only want the first hit. So you probably want to get to the habit of timing the down four. That's not too bad. You gotta get used to when you recover. Uh, when a down four connects on back turn, you're not going to get anything because you're negative nine or whatever, right? This is not going to give you anything guaranteed. And then they can duck that, and he has no mid option. So just take the down four and leave it at that. And down four keeps you covered if they stay down also. It, it kicks them away. Uh, though, if they wake up kick, you can get the whole string, but, I mean, good luck. The game doesn't flash counter hit like Street Fighter does for 2D fighters do for you, unfortunately. I kind of wish it did. That would be a nice addition, in my opinion, at least. The little counter hit shit that you see here. That. Why not flash that or the punish during the match? Why not? Whatever. I guess they would want less clutter in their precious 3D fighter. Personally, I don't see an issue with it. Alright, so we got the 4 4 1 plus 2 throw out of the way. Um, for those of you wondering, that is a 12 frame grab still. It's not like the other ones that are 11 frames. Next, we got the tackle, and so the tackle follows. Now, he, these three are his unique tackle follows. Frostbite, Achilles Hold, and Iron Curtain. This is one. It's a cool-looking one, and the Oki looks like it might be good after it. This is two. I said Achilles Hold, I'm sure. That doesn't look like there's any Oki. And then the one plus two, which is a really cool one. Bam, 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 bam. I miss Marduk. That looks like it might be a good Oki. All right. Let's go through this. Ugh. I can't even put a one plus two. Yeah. I'm mashing it out just to make sure I got a good recording. Okay, so we got this situation again. If the down three reaches, though, it's not bad. It might. Yes. And it covers side rolls? It covers side rolls. Now, you got a legitimate 50-50. What that means is I have to get up and low block to not get hit by that low. It's my only option to not get hit by that low. Let's test it with a down two. Now, this is on the slower side, but... I mean, it's only one frame slower. It might still be good for it if it reaches. Ah, 
uh, Yaddy's down three. What's up, Asura Senki? How you doing? Yeah, so Yaddy's the down three. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, about this tackle, you could. Uh, I showed this off last time, I think. It's the one plus two break, right? And depending on your timing, I think it is, if you break it like almost like a just frame, you could reverse this. Last time, right? There it is. Is it because I was crouching? It's very difficult to do. It used to be, I feel like this used to be easier to do. It might just be me. Like, people were doing this shit all the time, doing the reversal, putting me on my back for doing this. Um, everybody pretty much gets it after a, a certain amount of steps, too. See? And uh, Dragonoff's is uh, the, the same as his uh, default one in that it's unique. The animation is a little unique and his uh, options are unique off of it. See, he gets the same options. And of course, it's the same thing as the Living Dead uh, tackle. Same options. Uh, to break them, it depends on what he presses, right? So the one I recorded was a one break. So you have the, basically, you have the chance to break the, the tackle itself. Right, you have the chance to reversal the tackle, and you get on top, and then after he, if he gets a successful tackle, which is ten damage, what is it, five damage, you have to guess a three-way guess to break it again. So it's really not in his favor. This is the so yeah, it's a it's a one break if he does the one. If he does the two. Two break. If I mash one, doesn't work. And then One plus two. If I do one or two, let's see. Nope. Nope. Three-way guess. It's like Marduk, basically. I said Marduk was able to fake you out with his one or two. He would lift his left hand, and then you could cancel it and go right instead. <laughs> it was pretty sick. Um... Okay, I think this one gets the best Oki okay, because down two will probably work. Let's see. Yep, it beats wake up low. It beats wake up mid. I'm gonna hold back now. And it hits you for holding back. Legit 50 50 with the best low option, which doesn't get you killed on block, basically. Unless it's Kazuya or Josie. Uh, is Law a hard character to pick up? King Ghoul asks. Uh, yes. Well, no, you, you, asked, you asked specifically to pick up, so uh, just to be sure. By pickup, you just mean like you're starting to learn the game or you're starting to learn a new character and you just want to fuck around, but you still want to have at least a decent amount of tools that aren't super hard to execute. Yeah, Law has those. You can play Law uh, uh, basic. Down back three is a good low poke. Banana peel, which I think is forward plus both kicks or down forward plus both kicks. That's another good low. Uh, the slide is probably going to be pretty hard, but that's something you're going to want to incorporate pretty early. So that might be as hard as it gets for you until later. 
Uh, you could convert his magic four without having to do DSS. That's not hard to do. Um, same thing with his forward, forward three plus four grab. You could, converting that isn't hard to do without DSS. Uh, his jug. The, the the thing about law is, without DSS cancels, his juggle damage is fucking bottom tier. Really bad. Really, really bad, right? But it's not gonna like, you know, as long as you play well, you can make up for that, right? I, I, I learned Miguel, like, well, I haven't learned shit, but <laughs> I just started fucking around with Miguel. I, I almost never land a full juggle. I can still beat people with, <laughs> you know? As long as you're neutral, your basics are good at second, you could do fine. So just uh, build that other stuff up. So yeah, you could, you could play Law at a reasonable level and learn that shit along the way. Yes. I think so. Lee is the easiest to... Shut up. <laughs> uh, he has such great payoff. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Why are you lying to people? Um... Alright, so Cold Fate. That would be his crouch and grab. This is also what happens if you cancel this, right? No, not that. Um, that cancel is actually a unique grab. I feel like I've seen him do that throw off of... Oh, he does it off of his unique low parry. Yeah, okay, sorry. All right, so this, let's see. It knocks him too far away. Yeah, it just knocks him too far away. I don't think there's any real... Yeah. Also, he loses to wake up low. Ugh. No Oki off of that shit. Backdash. Oh, really? <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Oh, man. That makes this shit suck. How often do you get a crouch, da uh, a crouch grab? And then you're going to make it like that, so it's going to be hard to fucking set up a whiff punish. And he's at negative disadvantage. Whack. Yep, there's the wall combo. I'll get I'll get there soon. But that's the one you want to learn. So yeah, this crouch, don't even bother with this shit. In case you're wondering how to break it, I imagine it's based on what he presses. That's usually how this works, right? So you see here it says you can press down plus 1 plus 3 or down plus 2 plus 4. So it's a 50-50, just like his hit throw with the knee. Depends on what your opponent presses. No visual tell. 50-50. Crouch grabs suck. They used to be better. There used to be ways to use them, but now... See, that's a 1 plus 3 I just did. Yeah, see? So you have to break it based on what he presses. That was a 1 break. Uh, in case you're wondering, moves that recover crouching... Uh, and are at least negative 13 in the case of this crouch, jab, uh, crouch grab, I guess. You could punish them with crouch grabs. I wouldn't recommend it. Marduk had a crouch uh, grab where he pushed you down on the floor and kneed you in the head. That gave him a guaranteed stomp. And it still wasn't worth it. <laughs> still wasn't worth it. So yeah, don't bother with crouch grabs. And we got red alert. That's his uh, attack reversal. No, let's try it with... Uh... Alright, there we go. So this activates on like, like with most counters, I think this activates on frame 2 or 3. Not on frame 1, that's for sure. Actually, what is that? Negative. Oh, that's only negative six. Yeah, so it's probably like on frame three for a few frames. Uh, what's negative nine? See, not on frame one. 12 frames. 
frame three. I don't have an 11 frame to test. So uh, I think frame three is a safe assumption, though. Chicken. Chicken. It is chickenable. But it works on the highs, mids, punches, and kicks. So no elbows. I mean, not that could just be frame. I'll just show you with um, that. Yeah, see. Oh boy, how do I? Okay, 13 frames. Do I have a 13 frame? Uh, That's 19. All right, for those who don't know how to chicken, it depends on what you press, not your opponent. If you press something using your right limb, right arm, or right uh, leg, you have to press forward plus uh, two plus four. If you use something with your left arm or leg, you have to press forward plus one plus three to chicken. 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 So punches, he does uh, that arm bar. That might give good okay. Hard to test, though. <laughs> really hard to test. To test this, I need a second person with me. I don't know if I can record a sequence to test this. Is there an easy way to do Dragon Ball's instant while standing moves? Uh, sort of. The key is, you see how I have my inputs recorded? The key to Dragon Ball's instant while standing is he has a roll dash, right? So what you want to visually see is that, right? But faster, you don't want to see that gap, really. Well, I guess you do want to see the gap. You visually, you want to see that input. You want to see that without uh, the forward. There it is, without the gap. You see the last one doesn't have the gap like the first one does? That's what you want to see. So turn, that on, uh, turn on the uh, command capture or whatever the fuck it's called, the command history, and try to look for that input. That's what you want to work toward. If you see a quarter circle forward four, that means you pro uh, it probably came out slower than it should have for the most part. So the idea is to do down, down, forward while avoiding the forward and then input, let go and input four. Don't input it as plus four. Do down, down, forward, let go and then press four right after letting go. Otherwise you get that. And then if you do cross circle forward, you get that usually. Now, you don't need this to do the counter hit while running two juggle, in case you're wondering. You only need this to, uh, that's why I'm not good at it. I never felt like I needed it. You used to need it to convert this into a full juggle. You don't even need it, need it for that anymore, because now you could just do the down two pickup. Which is inconsistent. <laughs> so you, I guess you still need it for that. Uh, also, this is really where you need it, but it's like how often do you see that happen, right? But you really need it so I'll stand for for that See never felt the need to learn it this way as far as the while running two shells talking about, you don't need to do instant. You don't have to do instant to do while running, uh, to convert while running two. They need to buff chicken, at least plus three. <laughs> it's also to reverse the death physical animation. 
Uh, King Ghoul, thanks man, I've been looking at trial some law geese. Geese is fun. I'm just trying to figure out who to go with. Yeah, I mean, fuck around. Have fun. Uh, there are some characters where if you really care about, like, avoiding very difficult to use characters, if you really care about that, especially during your learning process, there are some characters where I could recommend avoiding. But at the end of the day, play who you want, regardless of if they're easy to use or not, or if they will formulate bad habits or not. You just, uh, you should go in aware of that, though. Learn who you want to learn. Like, if you want to learn Feng, learn Feng, but just know that you're going in with a character that, uh, that is able to, um, build bad habits in you. If you just willy-nilly just fucking start using his built-in bullshit to avoid moves and never learn how to do it the normal way. And then the moment you, like, fight a person who knows how to really fuck you up for doing that kind of shit and you have to do things the normal way to beat him consistently, that's when you get fucked over. Plus 15, no G, and all that gives you a round. <laughs> yeah, Aris was the one that said they should buff chicken, right? It's not really worth it, considering every, all things involved. You could mash it out, though. You could totally, every time you input a poke, you could just mash out a chicken during during the startup and the recovery of your poke. See? This is me mashing out a chicken. In case you're wondering, you cannot chicken low parries. Can't do it. I don't know about Dragon's Command low parry, though. Mm. Doesn't look like you can. But you know what? That looks like it gives good Oki. Looks guaranteed. Oh man. So this is down forward plus one plus two. Okay, it's not that good. Down two is guaranteed. Stomp is not. I mean, at the end of the day, you should just do a regular ass low parry anyway. 17. 22. Yeah, even 22 plus 17, even that doesn't beat low parry damage. Especially if walls are involved or rage drive. But that's cool to know. So yeah, that goes over his unique shit. That's Pitfall, right? Not forward one plus two. Um, we went through Red Alert. It's a regular ass counter. Can't really test the Oki off of it unless I have a second player. Um, let's go through Floor Break. Oh, my default face is uh, pretty angry looking in general. I just hate you. I know that you're here, that's why I'm making that face. Alright. So. I'm looking at what throws break the floor. If any. Because I forget. I think his full form plus two one does. Yeah, this shit does everything. Fuck. This shit does everything. Look at that shit. <laughs> you probably only get a dash up 3-1-2 after that because of the angle. But that damage is still good. Fuck. Oops. Does that break the floor? Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Still good. By the way, how you enjoying Gundam, Chelsea? What episode are you up to? But, um, this is a combo. You can do two of those back to back. Jeez, I used to be able to do it. I did this in tag too. Wow, come on, man. All of a sudden, I can't use it while running. The reason I want to see this is because this might be the way to get the most damage off of this. I want to see how much damage just two of them back to back do. Not the full juggle. Just two back to back. Definitely used to in Tag 2. If it doesn't work anymore, it might be a character dependent thing now. You're still at episode 12? I'm a Gundam evangelist, and I always evangelize OG Gundam. I'm not a fan of the new stuff, really, but by all means, watch it if you enjoy Gundam. If you end up enjoying the whole series, watch them all. Find out for yourself which ones you like and don't like. But I always evangelize going back to the first one. The main timeline, the uh, UC, Universal of the Century. All right, so I, could, I was able to get that at work. It probably still works on big characters, would be my guess. Uh, don't break your back over it. Do usual shit for floor break, right? Do the fucking... Of course, you can also do the classic... Uh, you can't floor break here, but you can still do the classic... Not that. The classic. That floor breaks, too. I don't think it's that useful here, though. The only time I would use 4-3 to floor break would maybe be at the wall. But 25 damage for a single hit. So we know 4 full 1 plus 2, the throw you'll probably be using the most. Floor breaks and start to juggle, which is fucking crazy, right? <laughs> Let's go to a regular wall stage now. So yeah, so you're up to episode 12. So did you already see episode 12? Or is that the next one you have to watch? Episode 12 is the one with uh, Ramba Raw, Goof. This is no Zaku, boy. No Zaku. Goof is one of my favorite suits. As a matter of fact, let me take a moment here to show you something. I built because back when I used to do build a lot of these and uh, when I was in high school like 2001 and 2002 whatever uh, my high school is right next to Chinatown I live next to Chinatown in Manhattan and uh, we have a mall there in Elizabeth Street near the old Chinatown fair basically like a block away that sells a lot of uh, at the time sold a lot of uh, models 
And the one I was always after at the time was the Gulf Custom. Now, this is not from Mobile Suit Gundam. Let me take a quick second here to show show this. But my friend bought it for me recently, like two years ago, because he know he knew I was always looking for this shit. This is Gulf Custom. This is not the one that you see in the episode you're about to. The one you're about to see is just a regular version of this. This version has that fucking Gatling gun right there, though. Where's oh, my finger at? That Gatling gun. And this is Master Grade. MG, motherfucker. So the scale is 1 to 100 scale. You, you can see the 1 to 100 there. High grade is usually 1 uh, one and 144. I actually have a Zaku 2 over there that my friend built here. And I this is the last one that I built. After years of not having such shit. I don't do the, the custom shit, though. I'm not like good at it like that. But yeah, it didn't fall apart, really. I did do some detailing. There's gold custom right there. Yeah, I used to have like a whole bunch of these posed in uh, my old room with a big ass dresser and I had them all like I, I, I made my own like weird little battle like there was some Amy and other ones that were like swords clashing and shit like that because the joints especially if you put some like you know there are people that do really crazy customization with these with the joints they use like putty or whatever to harden to hold them in place and shit I'm letting my weed flag fly over here uh I never got into it like that. I just like building them. Oh shit, his Gatling gun fell. The cool thing about this one is he has a, a cable, a whip cable. He uses this as a whip and he uses this as a grappling hook. And the regular golf and this golf, both versions, they grapple onto the enemy and then they like electrocute them. They call, they say in the dub, it's like heat, it's not electricity, but visually it looks like he's electrocuting him. It doesn't make much sense. This was only like 15 bucks. Back in the day when I used to buy these, these Master Grades in that mall, $44. For, uh, $35 to $44, depending on which one. That import tax. This was crazy. Oh, shit, I got number one. And this is the regular ass Zaku 2, the high grade. See, HG. This is the one that you're used to. See, one in 144 scale. But just to show you the difference of what that means. In size wise. Zaku 2 and Gopher are basically equally tall. This is a one in 144 scale. See how much smaller that shit is? Also, the green is not quite right. This is like a puke green. Not like an actual Zaku 2 green. Quarter circle forward two running two works. That actually doesn't surprise me. That probably gets more damage than what you would usually do. So yeah. After letting my weed flag fly for a bit there, let me pump up my AC and get back to this. What's up? I can't see that name at all. I have the dark background on. Hated greatness was going on. Wow. If it works off of course looking forward to it, it works off of running too. Maybe it's just drag. There it is. That ain't combo. That's a reset, though. That's a reset, not a combo. Because the thing is, running two used to bound. It does work off of this. So that's one instance where, you, uh, where you're going to want to use it in the floor break stage to get more damage. Yeah, that's a reset. You got to combo? I'm 
only gonna get to reset, and that's a combo. Reset. Only reset. It might be a character thing. Dragon Dog just might be too small to get it. Well, fuck all that noise for now. That was just uh, testing for the floor break stage. How often are you gonna be in that situation, room, right? That was worth learning in tag two. Now it's just like whatever. So we went through all this shit. Right now I wanna go through the wall stuff. Now I don't think I'm gonna surprise anybody when I talk about how Dragon Ball's wall game works. Right? So we all know that the uh, primary wall splatting tools for Dragon Ball generally. Back four three. That's probably that's the big one. Back four three is the one you're gonna hit the most, right? And uh, for those of you that don't, that don't know the wall combo, there's a couple. Uh, this down back, uh, sorry, back two into while standing one plus two is still applicable. It's not ideal anymore because sometimes you'll get weird shit like this happening or you'll switch sides depending on the character or some shit like that. But the thing about that combo is it makes it so the shoulder always rescales. It's like impossible to not have the shoulder rescale to 60%. It says, depending on the character, you get some weird situations. Uh, I've seen some people say that 1 3 2, despite the less damage, is good for Oki. Did my playlist end? No, it didn't. Um, it does give Oki where you have to hold back, but it's only 55 damage. And. Uh, you can't delay the two, but I don't think it lands as a low wall hit. Yeah, no. No, you can't delay the two. I thought you can. Nah, you can't. So you cannot de delay the two, so it's like whatever, right? Nope. See? So what you actually uh, generally want to do is down back off of an up close wall splat, really? Down back 2 1, delay the 2. Here's what happens if you don't delay it. The last hit does 7 damage. You see it says 36%, and it only does 58 uh, damage total. That's what if you don't delay it. If you delay it, the last hit does 12 damage, rescales to 60%, and you get 62 damage. Basically. The same as that, except you don't get this weird shit, like this weird positioning shit. Stuff like that. So, you can also do back 2, 1, 3. Now, what makes this one good is you only sacrifice 2 damage, and it's actually pretty somewhat consistent at odd angles. If you're unsure how... Uh, as long as the it's not a situation where the opponent is face against the wall, side wall... Depending on the angle, this is something you just gotta generally get used to. It's pretty, see, it's pretty good. I mean, there you really wanna like carry them off the wall and get a full juggle, but just in situations where you're unsure of yourself, it's pretty damn consistent, and that's what makes it good. What you really wanna do there, though, is like you wanna carry them off the wall, right? It's a whatever. That's typically what you actually want to do. Uh, when you're in an on action situation, and you wall splat with that, I think. Can you get a re splat? There it is. You have to go to your right. Now, this also might be character dependent. Why the characters? This is one of those things that gets really finicky. But if you go to your right, with the right timing. You could get a resplat. See? Seventy five damage. 
All right, so now they got that out of the way. That's your primary wall splat suit. Other ones, uh, the other that that's your primary up close wall splatting suit. Uh, you have other ones you can use up close, but in general, you're gonna want to be around here. In general, because uh, here you got back three. You want to do like wall standing four shit, right? As long as you're not slow. Nope, oh, too slow. Too much delay. This is not easy to do. Maybe don't go so crazy about this one resplat. Because it's a little fucking finicky like this. So maybe just take it and do the regular ass wall combo. There you go. You want to delay it enough so it still combos. You don't want the last hit to connect like a, a reset that can be tech. So anyway, you got back three, safe on block, homing high, 14 frames. You got up forward three, safe on block, uh, what is it? 23 frames, but... The speed in this case doesn't matter. What matters is something else. I'll go over that in a second. Um, you still got generally back four three to uh, to work with from that range. You got counter hit one two one of course. Uh, what are the other big wall splat tools? I don't think there's really much else. I mean, sure you got counter hit down forward one four to wall splat with also, but really people focus on those three. It's really mostly back four three, back three. And then up forward three, right? Which can also be input as up three. Which is important also, and it's still wall splats. So the thing about up three and up forward three. It pushes you back, right? There's a spacing where you could essentially make most uh, retaliation with. The thing is, if you do up three, it's unsafe. But there's a spacing to do up forward three. You see how he doesn't move forward? Like, the moment it gets blocked, he stops and goes down. If you're up close, it's just like you're up close and that's that. But... There's a spacing where, yeah, see, there it is. You get like him to block it with his arms. Look at all the space created, the jab whiffs. This is the ideal spacing. Because then it's a situation where like, if you see Aris play Dragon off, he often ducks after that gets blocked. And he'll wall standing shoulder their ass into the wall if they do anything. Or while standing one three, if they whiff anything. So basically, you want to practice to get in that good spacing where you you just stop moving forward the moment it's blocked. You kind of push yourself back a little. That's what makes this cheat, because what's going on is it pushes back mid stage, but for whatever reason, at the wall, you still maintain that spacing. That's like not a common thing. See, his standing forward doesn't reach. Standing forward doesn't reach. Back forward doesn't reach. Remember, you're doing this with the intent of setting them up to whiff if they retaliate. Uh, you also get four forward three if you want to get really crazy. And then here, you actually retain the plus three right in their face without the pushback. And that does wall splat also, of course. You get like a visual indicator here. That shit on the floor there that my left foot is standing in. Like, if you get his foot to touch the line there. See? That's a good visual indicator. Oh, actually, my donation thing is blocking it. But, you know, that line going across the floor there, that's a pretty good visual indicator. So, yeah. There used to be a way to get that spacing up in the opponent's face. Like, I think it was up three, but up three is negative 13. I don't think it was that before. I think it was safe, and I think they might have fucked with it. Because, you see, he pushes himself back. But if you do up forward three, he stays up in their face. It's really weird. What's up, Landonia? 
of course, back one plus two is all of a sudden a much bigger threat up against the wall. Uh, and in general, you know, you work in your magic, your down twos. You can still do a down back three, but your reward is a lot less. You only get a stomp instead of a juggle, so. Or down four, one, three. Go figure. For like five more damage. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, other stuff that wall splats that you probably won't use, but they're there. It's forward uh, three, two. That's a wall splat. Um, I mean, his launchers, of course, but nobody uses those also. Uh, oh, yeah. When you get a wall carry, if you're, let's say, maybe this far from the wall, you might want to end the juggle with 2-1-3 because you see how it sends him flying across the, the, the stage into the wall and he still gets splatted fully instead of slumped. See, that's like a decent choice sometimes. Other times, you know, depending on the juggle, you might want to do that instead, but you see it doesn't carry as much. It like leaves him really close to him. So that wall carry isn't as good on 4-1. Um, it's decent on 3-1-2, as you can see. You generally want to do it, like I said before, in a situation where you could fill in the gap with the 3-1-2 rather than some other stuff. But 4-1-3 is good. Because then you can run up and do whatever, right? That doesn't work. Well, that definitely works, though. I just fucked up the timing. See, it gives you time to run up and do a ball combo. So 2-1-3 is good for that also. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Unless anybody has anything they remember or any questions. Whether it's Dragon Off or related or not, any questions, feel free to ask. This was, that's just some good general shit that I remember. Yeah, so his wall game, like I said, is augmented by back one plus two, which allows you to keep your wall pressure up. Back one plus two sets up back four three to be a frame trap. Sorry. Oh, yeah, back one two wall spots also, but it's not safe. It, of course, sets that to be a frame trap, and if it hits them, you get a stomp. And you can keep your pressure up after the stomp because you don't push yourself back like you do in mid stage. You push them away mid stage. So you can basically go stomp and you can go right back into that. See? That just whiffed. That was still your frame advantage, but it whiffed because he got up late. Oh, look at that. I forgot about this. This this gives you into the stomp, gives you enough advantage to go into it again. And they can't wake up kick you at all. There used to be a different setup off of this. In tag two, I believe you would crouch jab and it would float them into the wall. Uh, what's good to do when they splat? I said that already. <laughs> Down back two, one, delay two. Yeah, delay the last hit. That was too much. That's what you want to do. You want to delay it so you get 60% on the last hit. But not so much that they're able to tech out of it. Which means you want to see a combo. If you do it too slow, that, well, no, that was perfect. It's actually hard to fuck up. I keep getting it now, now that I... <laughs> yeah, see, it just whiffed there. I'm trying to get it so it resets. Well, whatever. I'm getting it to combo every time now that I want to show you it fucking up like it, like it did before. Whatever. And then if you happen to land an on-axis back 4-3, you could sidestep and re-splat with it, but this takes practice. 
You have to size up like the perfect amount to get it. See? This is the kind of shit you gotta sit here and really nail down if you wanna get this during a match. It's not easy to it's not easy to do consistently. Because it's all about timing. And also it depends on the character sometimes. Like Kuma, you might, you know, I don't know what Dragon Ball's Kuma specific juggle would be, but uh Kuma you'd have to do some fucking weird shit, I'm sure, to get the most out of it. Uh, by the way, while running two also wall splats and puts you at plus five in your face, so and depending on your angle here, you could get a resplat. It might set it up for you. Not, not there. See, uh, you, you recover too slow. So you only get it if it happens to position you like it did for me that first time. Okay, so there's that. Um... Uh, yeah, that's Dragon Ball, guys. I guess if nobody has any more questions, what time is it? It's 7.20.